Okay, so the topic of this presentation is the phosphorus cycle. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so, you know, why do we need phosphorus? Well, here's a molecule of DNA. You remember that DNA is made from building blocks called nucleotides. If we look at this diagram right here, we can see the phosphate groups labeled with the black circle with the letter P. Well, within a phosphate group is phosphorus. So without phosphorus, our cells can't make DNA. And then let's not forget, here's an organelle called the mitochondria. And the job is to produce uh, cellular, the job is to perform cellular respiration and make this molecule called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. One, two, the, there's the three phosphates. And in the middle is the P for phosphorus. So without phosphorus, the mitochondria can't make ATP energy. And then here's a diagram of a cell. You might remember the outer boundary is the cell membrane. Well, when you zoom in, the cell membrane is called a phospholipid bilayer, phospho, as in phosphorus. So there's phosphorus in the very boundary of every cell of our bodies. And so uh, we need phosphorus, but there's a problem. There's no phosphorus in the atmosphere. You look at this pie graph right here, we see about 78% nitrogen, about 21% oxygen, about less than 1% argon. And then if we zoom into the small wedge that's left, you can see trace amounts, that very small amount of carbon dioxide, that little about amount of neon, that little amount of helium, that little amount of methane, that little amount of hydrogen gas, that little amount of krypton but there's no phosphorus in the atmosphere. So where do we get phosphorus from? Well, let's explore that. So if we look at the stages of the phosphorus cycle, in area one, this is where phosphorus comes from, from the weathering and the breaking down of rocks. So, you know, when it rains uh, and just being exposed to the weathering and the elements of nature, uh, minerals from rocks, including phosphorus, are released into the soil. And once they're into the soil, well, now we can focus on area two of the diagram. The phosphorus is simply in, uh, taken into uh, producers through plant, uh, the plants through the roots. And now it just moves up the food chain into the plant. And then uh, notice how we're kind of just going up the food chain right now into the snail and then from the snail into uh, the, the frog and whatever organisms might be in this environment. This is a very simplistic environment, but I hope you get the point that the phosphorus just moves up the food chain. And then in area four, we have mushrooms, symbolic of our decomposers. Well, they need phosphorus as well, and they get phosphorus from the breaking down of, of dead material, dead material, dead leaves that fall off of plants, animal droppings, the remains of dead organisms. This is how they get their phosphorus. And in the waste of decomposers, when they give off waste, they give off phosphorus back into the soil. So if you notice, we have ourselves a cycle here involving phosphorus. Now let's focus for a moment on the human contribution to the phosphorus cycle. Phosphorus cycle is a bit out of balance. And here's the reason why, you know, through the use of fertilizers, which often contain phosphorus to help crops grow, uh, phosphorus and other fertilizers are spread around fields and crops around the world. And the problem though, is when it rains, um, the, the, uh, the phosphorus and the other chemicals can be washed away with the rain. And so if we come back here and let's add a person here and let's have them spray some phosphorus onto these, uh, these plants right here. Well, if it rains shortly after, the phosphorus can simply be washed away into this waterway, this water, body of water right here. Maybe it's a lake, river, maybe an ocean. Now let's just call this a lake. And the phosphorus builds up and builds up. Now phosphorus is a great fertilizer. That's why we add it to crops. But in this case, the phosphorus can cause an overgrowth of algae in this body of water here, what's called an algal bloom. And you notice in this picture right here, this lake looks awfully green right there because of an overabundance of algae. Same thing in this marina picture right here. You can see the, the algal bloom in the marina picture. Well, so why is this so bad? This leads to a process known as eutrophication, where you basically get a dead lake or a dead body of water in this sense, because as the algae feed on the extra phosphorus, they, they over multiply. The algae grow so thick and dense, they can block the sunlight from reaching aquatic plants that live in the body of water and the aquatic plants begin to die. 
the bacteria that are in this body of water then begin to break down all these dead plants. And in the breaking down of these dead plants, they gobble up the oxygen and the fish in this body of water actually suffocate from a lack of oxygen because the bacteria have gobbled it all up. Also, the bacteria give off carbon dioxide in, this, uh, in the decomposition process and carbon dioxide can help to change and alter the pH of this body of water. And so you get this dead zone right here. Uh, how is something like this avoided? Well, I'm not saying that this is a 100% cure-all, but one thing as a consumer that uh, that can be explored is, you know, shopping for organically grown foods, uh, foods that are grown without the use of pesticides and fertilizers. So thanks for watching as we wrap up this video right here. Okay, so here's a little practice quiz that you can try. Check your understanding. And if you're in my biology class, you know, write your answers on a separate sheet of paper. I'd be happy to check your answers before class or after class one day. Thanks for watching.